today we're going to be talking about train up your children. Yesterday I was playing a game and uh, Brill's like, hey dad, let's go outside and let's look, look at God's good nature. She always says that. And I said, I I'll be out there in a second, Brill. And she says, oh, do you like your game more than you like God's nature in God? And she always knows how to give you the guilt trip. I was like, okay, Brill, let's go. Let's go outside. And we were sitting out there, and she, you know, we were just all sitting in our little chairs in the backyard and just enjoying the time. And um, one thing she said, I said, Brill, do you like this? Do you enjoy this? She says, Dad, I'm going to always remember this. And I said, oh, oh. You know, to hear that as a dad, you know, to, to hear your daughter wanting to be in God's nature, wanting to be talking about God, because usually when we go outside, we're talking about God. And, and it's just beautiful that she has that instilled in her at a young age. She's only six. She, she has that desire. She has that want. She wants to be out there. And she says, I'm always going to remember this. And that's beautiful to remember as us parents and grandparents and great-grands that whatever we tell our kids, it may last them a lifetime. Whatever we impart to them, they may take, with, take that with them for the rest of their lives. There's experiences that I remember being at my grandma's house and my grandpa's house that I will always carry with me and cherish. And I believe she will as well, and I believe y'all will as well. But it's it's just that that training that you impart into them, that that want to be with God, that want to be in His nature, they'll keep that with them forever. So how important is it for us as their spiritual leaders to give that to them? And today, as it being Father's Day. It is good to remember the legacy we leave behind and what we leave will be with the next generation coming up. Amen? Uh, at, this is specifically uh, Father's Day. Nevertheless, this message also applies to mothers, grandmothers. And even if you don't have kids or anybody, you still have somebody that you can influence. If you're in here today, y'all saw many kids run back through there going to... Uh, children's Sunday school. So maybe it's a passing scripture that you share with them. I know uh, Miss Janet, she always uh, plays with our kids before school, I mean before church starts, and they always talk about the little thing that she does in the pew where the, she's bouncing them on her knee and she sings a little song, and they always say that and they, they remember that. So things that we share with them, you know, that they're going to remember. Amen? So we need to make sure that the things that we impart into our kids are good things, things of the Lord. But before we really get into the, the teaching of this, I want to give this as a disclaimer. Uh, some of the things that may be discussed are very sensitive issues. And I know that going into it, it can offend uh, some sensibilities. Some people have very different uh, raising methods. But hopefully, if you begin this study with me, in God's Word, you will have an open mind and an open spirit to what God says in His Word. Amen? That song that we sang about, you know, God's Word. Hopefully, if we acknowledge it, even if it's a hard teaching, and it won't be too big of a strain on our emotions, and we can accept it and openly and willingly. Amen? Amen. But with that said, parents have a very strong duty of raising the next generation. The duty of raising another spiritual being. We can't take this lightly because their eternity is at stake. Raising a spiritual being that will go on living after your sphere of influence. Good or bad. So whatever your influence was, they will continue on in that. Go on existing after you are dead and gone. Even after they are dead and gone, they will continue existing in eternity. Where will they be spiritually from your measure of influence? Where will they be? What will they take from you as you depart this world? What will be the legacy that you leave behind? Men, we were 
talking about it being Father's Day, and I don't know about you, but I have a strong sense of me wanting to leave a lasting legacy behind with my kids of serving God. Amen? I want them to remember that main thing. My wife shared a really nice, uh, beautiful message this morning, uh, a Happy Father's Day message, and she listed some of the qualities that I had and some of the things that I do with the kids. And the last thing she said was, and the, what you impart into them about Jesus. Amen? That is the main thing that we should focus on with our kids. They should know that we as parents or grandparents or great-grands or whatever love Jesus so much and we care about His ways and that even them as a young age start to care about Him and His Word, His will, and His ways as well. Amen? We should be leaving that behind and it should pick up with the next generation. Let's get into the Scripture. It's one of my favorite ones, and believe it or not, it's in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 6, 6-9. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets before your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. I love this scripture. This is saying pretty much in everything that you do with your kids, God should be there. God should be mentioned. Amen? God should be present. They shouldn't see you change and go off and do something different and, and, and be associated with this world and the things of this world. They should see God in every aspect of your life. All encompassing. Amen? They should see that from you and then when they go to live their lives, they will always have that in their mind. Well, my mom or my dad, they love God. They serve God. They obeyed God in every aspect of their life and so I'm going to as well. Amen? What a legacy to leave behind. And I like how he says all these different things. He says, you shall teach them diligently. Meaning, you're putting in a lot of effort into this. Not just willy-nilly. Not just half-heartedly. But you're teaching them diligently to follow the ways of the Lord. And not just telling them what to do. Right? Have you ever heard that old phrase? Do what I say, not what I do. Right? Right? No, they're going to do what you do. Not always do what you say, but they're going to do what you do. So you be a good influence in their life. You be a good example. Because they're watching you. They're looking and seeing how you are acting. They're seeing how you talk. And they are good repeaters. Trust me. <laughs> Whatever you say, they're going to say I'm raising two young ones, and believe it, they say that. And anybody who's already raised kids or raising kids, you know they are some little parrots. And if you say something, you better hope it's good because they're going to say it, right? So if that be the case, we need to make sure we're talking to them in good ways. Wholesome words. Amen? Don't let them pick up bad habits from you. Amen? Let them pick up good habits from you. And then it goes on to say, you shall talk to them when you sit down in your house. Are you talking about God in your homes with your kids? Not just little fleeting comments every now and then, but often. Are you speaking of God often to your children or your grandchildren or great-grands? You, you need to. That's what God tells us. When you're walking in the way, that just means whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, you at the grocery store and you mention something about God. Or maybe you're sitting outside and just looking at the stars and talking about God and His good nature. Amen? Everything should be all-encompassing. And then it says, you know, it goes on to say, when you lie down and when you rise up, when you lie down at night saying the Lord's Prayer, saying prayers with your kids, 
or even when they're getting up, hey, let's start a new day in the Lord. What do, what do you have for us today, God? Starting their day out right. And then just all throughout the day, they're just ever encompassed with God. Amen? Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That means that it has a lasting impression. Are there always exceptions to the rule? Of course. You may do your very best in training your kids, and they might go off and do some craziness. And they may never come back to God. But I believe as a whole, the Scripture rings true. Amen? As a whole, as we train our kids in the way that they should go, even if for some reason they were to depart when they get older, they will come back. They will come back to God, amen, because they will realize and remember what their parents taught them or their influence taught them. So we need to make sure we train them up in the right way. Train them up in the ways of the Lord. Parents, we've got to be diligent in your training of our children in the instruction of the Lord to reinforce God's Word at all times that you can. To be an example, you would want your children to follow. Some of the best leaders are good followers. So follow Jesus Christ to the best of your ability. Amen? Your children will pick up on that. Prepare them for their eternity. And don't neglect the most important thing in their lives. That being teaching them to have a good and healthy relationship with the Lord. That's the most important thing. Yeah, there's some other good things that we can teach them and train them how to do to ride their bikes, to learn how to fish and hunt, to teach them sports. These are all okay. But don't neglect the most important thing, and that's their understanding of the Lord, their relationship with the Lord. That's the most important thing of all. Amen? <laughs> And they should get that from us. Not from, not, not from just Pastor Brandon on Sundays or, or Miss Alyssa in Sunday school. They should get it from you at home. We here are just to reinforce what you've already been telling them. Amen? We are just to here to say amen to what you've already said. And they are to say, hey, that's just confirmation to what Mama, Daddy, Grandma, Grandpa already have been telling me they got to get it from you first. But that puts a, a big burden on you. I realize that. That means you got to study to show yourself approved first to help them to learn how to be good students. Amen? Ephesians 6, 1-4. through 4. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. <coughs> Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Amen? Bring them up in the training. Training. Training them in the ways of the Lord. you got to train them like you're training them how to hit the ball. This is baseball season. My little nephew, he's always wanting me to th play catch with him whenever we come around. He's like, he's just already grabbing his glove and ball and say, well, let's come on, Pat. Come on, Uncle Brandon. Let's go outside and play catch. And he wants me to pitch it to him and him hit. And he wants that, right? But you get, there's a training there. There's a constant there. And also, whenever I'm around him as well, I try to talk to him about God. Amen? Because that's what's more important than anything. And admonition. Let's look at a definition there. Gentle or friendly reproof, counsel or warning against fault or oversight, a criticism or warning about behavior. Ooh, I'm glad my brother's not here today or, his, or, or, or uh, Victoria. But we had Sawyer this past week. He came over and, man, sometimes. He, I, think he's a, he, I think he's a good, sweet boy, but he also can just be disobedient. I mean, just straight up disobedient. Well, we had this little uh, 
little thing that you stomp on and it shoots these little flying arrows. They don't, they're not, they're like soft arrows. They don't hurt anybody, but he was shooting them up to the ceiling and it was getting close to the fan. And I said, hey, hey, let's move this away because I don't want that to mess up the arrow or maybe you know, clog up the fan and mess that up. I was like, let's move it over here away from the fan. Well, I walk out of the room and the next thing I see is that little fart bring it right under the fan. And I said, hey, no, Sawyer, we don't want to do that. Let's get that out of here. You know, let's, I don't want to, I don't want that to mess up the fan. I, you know, maybe, I was like, maybe he didn't understand what I was saying. You know, let me break it down to him real slowly. So I moved it way out of the way again. And I went out of the room and came right back. And he had moved it right, even further under the fan. Like really just trying to hit the fan now. And I'm like, oh my goodness, the blatant disregard, right? Complete disobedience. I was like, you're done. I took his, I took the toy up, toy up, and I brought it to our room. I was like, you are done. You're not playing with this anymore. But if he would have been one of mine, whoo, child, I would have tanned their hide. Y'all remember that old saying? Oh, yeah. I would have tore that little booty up. I couldn't believe how disobedient that was. But we got to be able to warn our kids. What you're doing is wrong. And sometimes what we have to do is spank their booties. Unfortunately, we... You know, as society keeps getting further and further away from God, people get further and further away from His Word as well. And you may be close to God, and you may have uh, an understanding of God, but you can't leave things out. If He tells you something in the Word, we must be obedient to that. Amen? And show them that when they get out of line with us, there's going to be consequences. There's going to be punishment. And most often, it's probably going to be a spanking. Because that's what is in the Word. Amen? There was this funny guy, uh, I heard a stand-up comedian say, he didn't know what the true nature of a spatula was until he went over his friend's house. He always grew up thinking that a spatula was just for whipping. <laughs> he thought that whenever you got spanked on the butt, with the, it was going to be with a spatula. And he went over his friend's house, and his mom was cooking eggs. And she was serving it up with a spatula. And he said, ooh, I don't want that. I don't want, I don't want you using that. That's been on booties. I don't want to eat those eggs. And I thought it was so funny. But he knew what a spatula was. He knew that that was going to be for spanking. And that's the thing. Kids need to know that you are going to get whipped if you get out of line. And what this does is it trains them to be obedient. Amen? Remember how the Word says, bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord? we got to train them that if you do something wrong, there will be a consequence to this. You will get spanked. You know, I, I mentioned this not long ago, but one thing my my son, he likes to get on his sister's nerves. And he will do something to her. He will slap her or hit her or whatever. And then, brill, here she comes, Miss Tattletale, uh, telling all what her brother did. And, he'll, and she'll come in and say, brother hit me or this or that. And I said, all right, I'm about to spank his butt. And she'll say, no, Dad, give him mercy. <laughs> she wants me to know about it, but she doesn't want him to get in trouble for it. <laughs> And it's so funny to see. But they know that spankings might just come. And yeah, I will give them mercy when she does that. I mean, bleeding heart, you know. I mean, how can you resist the pleas of the victim? You know, give them mercy, you know. So I say, okay, I'll give them mercy most of the time. But other times, like this past time, he punched her in the, in the tooth. And I said, Br Brill, what happened? He punched me in the tooth. I said, oh, I'm going to give him a whooping. Give him mercy. No, Brill, he's got to get a spanking this time. Right? He's got to get one. He's got to know he can't be punching you. 
So I sure enough spanked his little booty. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that think that you are not supposed to give that corporal punishment anymore. You're not supposed to spank. There's other forms of punishment. Have you heard that or do you believe that? I hope not. But yes, there can be other ways of discipline, but I think our ultimate weapon is to spank. I believe God told us to do that, and that's what we're supposed to do. Not just random spankings every now and then, but a consistent spanking. Amen? And parents, you got to know that you are the ones that are in control, not your kids. You are. God has entrusted them into your care. So you have to be the parent. Amen? Don't let them rule the roost, as it were. But let's look at some scripture at why we are to give spankings, not just timeouts, not just taking toys away. Those can be effective in their own right, but we are to use spankings. Let's go to Proverbs 22, 15. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it far from him. All right? So like I said, that can't be a once in a blue moon kind of a deal, but it has to be regular enforcement of the understanding of right and wrong, and then when you do wrong, you get spanked, right? Most of the time. Nevertheless, it says the rod of correction. Anybody ever get spanked with a rod? Maybe you got spanked with a switch. You ever heard of that term? That's an old term. Spanked with a switch. There's not much I remember about my Nana's mom but there is one thing I remember is that I got spanked with a switch. I don't remember what it was for, but I remember having to go out there and select yes. my tool of destruction. Oh, yeah. Right? That was the old thing. You send them out to go pick their own switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got to pick it. And it's just some kind of mental, you know, thing going on there that while you're going out there, it's like you almost hear. You know, you hear this boom drums going on like you're about to go into some real severe pain after you pick this tool of destruction that's going to be laid upon you. And, you know, it's that mental warfare leading up to it that makes that switch even more painful. But I do remember that. Even my own Nana never made me do that, but her mom did. And that was a lasting impression. That spanking. Now, I don't, I, don't, I don't remember any times that my toys were taken away. I don't remember any times that I was, uh, you know, grounded or sent to my room. But I remember every time that I was whooped. You know, because it leaves a last, lasting impression. Well, maybe not every time because I got a lot of whoopings. But, uh, <clears throat> maybe not as much as my brother. But we, I, we got whoopings. And I remember them. And it made me want to be a good kid. It made me want to not get spanked. Well, for one, because I didn't want the pain, but also, I didn't like upsetting. I didn't like upsetting my mom or dad or my grandma or grandma. I didn't want to make them upset at me, so I wanted to be a good kid, right? But I did get whooped, and I remember it. And I think that is one of the reasons why God tells us to do it. Because God is trying to teach us to train our children to want to please people, to want to please our parents, and then in turn it helps us to want to please our Heavenly Father. Amen? We have a desire to please Him first, but then also that constant thing in the back that we will get punished for our actions if we get out of line with Him. Right? Alright, here's another one. Proverbes 23, 13-14. Do not withhold correction from a child, for if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. Now, I don't believe it's really meaning beat like we understand the word beat. But I do believe it means give him a healthy whooping. Amen? I believe it means spank that butt or tan that hide, blister that booty, whatever you got to do. But give him that correction. Amen? And it says he will not die. It will deliver his soul from hell. These, these whoopings will train them to learn there's going to be consequence to their actions. And I believe that as they go into society, they will understand that with police and obeying the law and all of 
those things. But most importantly, the laws of God. It will give them a healthy understanding that they need to obey God, what He says in the Word. Proverbs 29, verse 15. Elizabeth, you've came out just the right time. The rod and rebuke give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Right? We can't just leave them to themselves and let them do whatever they want. We need to make sure that we give them whoopings and rebuke them when it is needed. Proverbs 29, verse 17. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. When we correct them, in any way. Here's another one. Proverbs 13, 24. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. And in correlation here, as we know that that rod will help deliver them from hell, if you withhold those whoopings, you're not really showing them love. And the Bible says you're showing them hate. Because they're not going to understand discipline from God. They're not going to understand discipline from society. They're not going to understand that respect and the consequence when you get out of line that you will get whooped. But we got to be the ones that train them, unfortunately. That is on us, but we got to accept that responsibility. Proverbs 19, 18. Chasten thy son while there is hope. And let not thy soul spare for his crime. Meaning, it's going to hurt you more than it hurts them. Yeah, it's going to hurt hearing them cry. I hate seeing my son bawling. Oh, daddy, please. Don't give me a whooping. It hurts. I don't like having to see him do that. But it does not make me shy away from spanking him. I have got to. Because while there is hope, I want to give him the understanding of right and wrong and consequences to your actions. Because then when he goes into society, he will be a helpful and productive member of society. Knowing that he does not need to go around breaking the law because he might just go to prison. And who knows what all happens there. Colossians 3. 20 through 21. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they be discouraged. Brindy's always getting on to me. She's always telling me this one and the last one about not, you know, don't provoke your children. Because sometimes I, I joke with them too much and, and it gets them angry. And the Bible tells us not to do that. And so we need to be careful not to provoke our children. But nevertheless, if we don't teach our children to follow Jesus, the world will teach them not to. I've heard that before and I thought, man, what a good quote. If we don't teach our children the right things, the world is definitely going to teach them the wrong way. The wrong way of living. We got to show them the difference between right and wrong. We got to teach them, and it is our responsibility. You know, uh, it, it took a while for Randy to convince me to want to have kids because I knew the grave responsibility it was of raising another soul, raising another spirit in this hard, harsh world. I knew the grave responsibility that would be thrust upon me. And yes, in the, in the back of my mind, I always wanted to have kids, but it was just such a hard thing to want to go into because I understood how hard it was going to be on me to train my kids in this hard world. And it gets harder and harder every day. It gets more evil and evil every day. And, and, and bringing up new people into this, it's almost like you just don't even want to. Because of how evil our world is. Nevertheless, God says be fruitful and multiply, right? And it is a blessing to have kids. It is. And I am so thankful that I ended up having kids and we had kids. And... But nevertheless, that responsibility has not left. And the more that I see 
but more of this homosexual agenda and the transgender stuff I see. The more evil that's thrown out there, it, it just everywhere you look, you can't even turn on YouTube without seeing an evil commercial. You can't even turn on the TV without see, seeing an evil commercial. You can't, I mean, it's just tough. And we constantly have to restrict. We constantly have to be there and say, oh no, you can't watch that or you can't listen to that because this world is just so evil. And it's geared to training them in the wrong ways. So we, as parents, it is our responsibility to train them in the right way and teach them the right things. Matthew 19, 13 through 15. Then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray, Jesus. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, the little children come to me. And do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. He wanted the kids to come. He loves the little children of the world. Amen, that song. He loves the little children. And if he loves the kids, it is a grave responsibility for us to make sure that as they are entrusted into our care, that we care for them and show them the right ways. Amen. Because ultimately, it is His kids. Ultimately, it is His. So we are just the stewards of the souls and the spirits that are entrusted to us. Matthew 18, 6-7 Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in Me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come. But woe to that man by whom the offenses come. Whew. That always scared me. You better be careful how you talk to kids and what you tell them and how you act around them. Because that scripture right there, man, a millstone hung around your neck, who's ever been terrified of drowning? Mm -mm. It says that would be a better outcome for you than for you to teach them to sin. To get them to sin. Ooh, And that's not just coaxing them to sin. Hey, tell a lie or, or get drunk or whatever. But that's being in a, uh, an example for them. Right? By your example, they will see what you do and go and do that. So don't be a bad example. Be a good example. We are the best examples our children will ever see. We need to be examples in all things concerning the Lord. Let them see that you want to go to church. Amen? We will be an example of going to church and showing them that that, that is a need. We need to be a good example in showing them that we like reading the Bible. Amen? And that it's good for us and good for them. We need to be good examples in our prayer life, showing them that we need to pray for all things and pray at all times without ceasing so that they take that with them into their lives. Amen? We need to be good examples in living righteously. Right? Not just while we're sitting here at church and then living however we want once we get home because they see that. They see that. They will go and do that too. No, we need to show them we need to be living righteously at all times. And then we need to be good teachers, teaching them these things. A great teacher desires for their students to go on to great successes, even of which that surpass their own. Amen? In this, a teacher can take joy. The more successful of one student, the more successful is the teacher. We have a teacher who issued us such a thing for us as well. That of Jesus, the great teacher. John 14, 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father. Jesus wanted us to go on to do greater works. Because He is the greatest teacher of them all. Amen? And every victory and success through us for the kingdom 
we see is a victory and success for Him. Anytime we go on and serve God with our lives, it is a success for Him. And in the same way as we are teachers to our kids and great kids, I mean, our grandkids and great grands, it will be a success for us seeing them go on and serve the Lord. Amen? We will say, yes! We, we imparted this truth to them and they're taking it and running with it. Amen? What I'm saying is making a difference. But we got to make sure of this truth. Joshua 1.8 This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Amen. Like that song Randy sang for us this morning. We got to make sure that we care about God's Word. And we got to make sure that we instill that into our children. And that they see that God's Word matters. It matters more importantly than what this world says. It matters to be obedient to it. Not just hear it, but do what it says. And then teach them to do that. And then we will have great success. Then our way will be prosperous. Then our children will have great success. Their way will be prosperous. They will have a good relationship with the Lord when they see us have a good relationship with the Lord. Amen? We should endeavor to show them that. Some of you in here today are here and you have grandkids or kids and they are back there hearing about Jesus as you're hearing about Jesus. And when you go home, if you have an opportunity, or when you go spend time with them, talk to them and ask them what they learned today. And maybe share with them a little bit about what you learned today. And as we remember that first scripture we heard, whatever you're doing, whether you're sitting down at your home, or whether you're going about the way, or riding in the car, or whatever you're doing, you're talking about God. And then they will take that with them as a lasting legacy. And like my daughter told me in the backyard, I will always remember this. Amen. Amen. Final thing, final point. I was drinking out of one of Rendy's cups yesterday. And on it, I thought that it had said, it takes a big home to teach little minds. And then I looked at it again, and it was actually heart instead of home. But for some reason, my mind read home at first. Listen to this. Home is where your heart is. Does that make sense? In a home of love, you can teach little minds the truth of God. They got to know that they are loved. Amen? You got to make sure that they feel love from you, and then whatever you teach them, they're going to get. Whatever you teach them, whatever you're training them, they're going to want because they are first loved by you. Amen? And they first understand what love is by you. And as they continue about their life, they will always think back to, does my home life line up with how my home life used to be? And they will remember the love that they were given by their mamas, their daddies, their grandmas, their grandpas, their great-grands, their great-grandmas, everybody. They're going to remember that. And they're going to match that up to whatever their situation is. Does this match up? And if it don't, they're going to say, oh, something's not right here. So it's our duty to make sure we show them love. Amen? It seems like an easy thing to say, but they got to know that, that you love them first. Right? And then whatever you got to say it makes it a little bit easier for them to take. All right. The one thing I got out of that song is I don't want it if you're not in it. Amen? Yeah. I don't want it if you're not in it. Right. But how much of God do you want? All of it. All of him. Well, that means in every aspect of your life, you got to find a way to bring him in. That's right. But if there's something you want to hang on to that's sin, he doesn't want to be in that. Are you saying, I want more of this sin mm -hmm. than you? Sometimes we want to do things that are sinful and be like, yeah, this is, this is my time. Well, how much of God do you really want? Do you want to have your time? Well, He'll give it to you. 
He'll let you do whatever you want. Go if you oh, that's what you want. Well, go ahead. But how much of him do you really want? And if we can really sing that song honestly, if you're not in it, I don't want it. You know, one thing I always use to check myself is what would Jesus do? Yes, yeah, an old saying, but it still rings true. It does. And if Jesus wouldn't do that, or if Jesus wouldn't say that, then I shouldn't either. Now, he obviously is the epitome of perfection. Mm -hmm. That's the goal, right? We're, we're always struggling to reach that, right? We, we will always miss the mark, and that's what sin is, missing the mark. The mark is perfection, though. And the thing is, is we got to come to the place where we say, I don't want to sin. I don't like that. I don't want to be accepting of sin. I don't want to just say, yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this. Because guess what? When we make that a place in our life, our kids see that too. Mm -hmm. And more importantly than even us right now is our kids. Right? Would you die for your kids? I think oh, most yeah. of you would say, yes, man. I would die for them. But will you live for them too? Will you live for God and His ways so that they can see that if, it, if He's not in it, I don't want it. And I'm sitting there listening to that song and feeling convicted. Because there's things that I watch that I probably shouldn't watch. That have cussing or whatever. Does that make me a prude? No. I, would want, I want more of Him. And, and to get more of Him, there's things i got to get rid of. Right? You want more of a connection with God? You want to see more of a move of God? Well, there's things you got to stop doing to get it, folks. You can't just keep living however you want and think you're going to get all of God. Because it's not going to happen. The closer of a walk you get with Him is how you see those things. Amen. Amen. And I'm convicted in that. And maybe some of you might be too. Maybe there's some things that you know you could do better. Maybe there's some sins that you know you're hanging on to that you could let go of to get a closer walk for God. And if not just for your sakes, maybe for your kids' sakes. Right. Amen? Amen? Maybe for that next generation that's coming up that we say, I want to do better so that they'll say, I want to do better. Amen? Amen? And maybe we feel a little convicted. Maybe we do feel that, but that's good. Don't push that away. Don't push that down and pretend you didn't hear it. Don't sear your conscience. Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. And maybe that liar is you today. And you've been lying to yourself. Man, I'm, me and God are right. Me and God are doing good. I'm right with Him today. And I've said that too. But I know in the back of my mind, I'm going to go do this that God wouldn't approve of. Or I'm going to watch this show that God doesn't like. But I'm going to do it anyway. Do you want to make God sad or do you want to make Him upset at you? Or do you want to make Him happy with your actions? Every single thing that we do matters. Yep. And we might want to say, oh, there's, it's not a bad thing to watch this. Because I'm not doing those things. But even the Bible says, watch what you put before your eyes. Watch what you put before your ears. There might be a song that you like, but it has bad words in it. Maybe we shouldn't be listening to that. Amen? Because I know Jesus wouldn't. I know there's things that I've watched that I know Jesus would not have sat through. He would have not tolerated it. He would have walked out. Maybe I need to get to the point of that in my life. And there's, and I'm a, I'm a movie guy. I like movies. And there's times where I'm like, ooh, I probably shouldn't be watching this. Now, there's one thing that I do not watch, and that's anything with nudity. I, I, I draw the line there. But there's other things that I, I'm a little bit more tolerant of, but maybe I shouldn't be. Because if I really want more of Him, maybe I need to get that out of my life. And if He's not in it, then I don't want it. Anyway, I'll get off my high horse. <laughs>